A leader is a shepherd. When it comes to a shepherd, we see this broken down a few different times here. One of the biggest assignments is to keep them covered with prayer. Um, So a shepherd models shepherding for the group. They create an environment in which people shepherd one another, and he seeks to teach. So the shepherd seeks to teach the group's members to become shepherds themselves in their families and future groups they may lead. So each and every single one of us here in person or on Zoom might not necessarily feel this deep calling to become a life group leader themselves. But if you're the man of the house, if you have children, if you're a mom, that there are still aspects of being a shepherd over your family. There's that spiritual covering that ties into being a shepherd. And so um, if you are here and you do not ever have that, if you're not feeling necessarily that call to be a life group leader, I want us to step away from that title for now just so that we can get the the perspective of being the shepherd of your house, being the shepherd of your home. You might come from a, a single mother or a single parent family, and in that role, you have to be the spiritual covering. You have to be the shepherd of your house. And so that's what we need to take from this lesson is that it goes farther than just in a life group setting. Now, that's the majority of what we're going to teach tonight. But shepherding in the Bible, what we'll see here soon is that it was so much more than just a, a discipleship group, that it went farther and farther to be able to take that role as the head of the household, to break every single generational curse so that God may release the generational blessings that come with shepherding his flock. Amen. We see in Ezekiel 34, 2 to 5, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God to the shepherds, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat and clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the fatlings. You slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the flock. The weak you have not strengthened, nor have you healed those who were sick, nor bound up the broken, nor brought back what was driven away, nor sought what was lost, But with force and cruelty, you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there were there was no shepherd and they became food for all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. So we see here that this is a a bit of a rebuke, right? Something about life group leaders specifically, um, but also keeping it in the perspective of being the shepherd of your home is the responsibility and the reverence that you should walk with that it talks about here in Ezekiel 34, 2 to 5, that these shepherds weren't even taking care of the flock. You know, we see in in the Gospels that Jesus leaves the 99 for the one. But here you see God rebuking through the prophet Ezekiel the shepherds because they are careless with their flock. They are careless with the blessing that God has given them. And so all about the perspective of being a shepherd of your home, being the shepherd of your life group is the perspective of holding that reverence and that trust with God in the aspect that God is trusting you with being that shepherd for that life group. We have a few life group leaders here. Can you just raise your hand if you're an existing life group leader? So we already have that culture being established. And for those who do desire that, it's not to go into something with a uh, with, without thought. It's something that you have to commit to. So a few of the life group leaders under my covering are here tonight. And something that I had, um, a conversation I had with them is that uh, before they ever even got to a point of wanting to lead or, or giving them the blessing to lead a life group, there was a very serious conversation of making sure that they can commit to even attending life group first. Because how can I uh, be able to give my blessing to someone who wants to be a life group leader if they can't even commit to coming to life group on a weekly basis or a biweekly basis, right? Your family uh, needs a little bit more attention than on a weekly basis or a biweekly basis. If you don't take care of your kid day in and day out, you're going to have a lot of different issues, right? So shepherding looks in a lot of different ways. Uh, We also see in the Bible that when it comes to being a shepherd that the flock has to have that consistent care. Sheep specifically, you have to be able to to then uh, take out their wool so that they don't have that extra weight on them so that they can 
perform the way that you have designed them and equipped them to do. And this is all about, we can, we can go a little bit deeper into this, but it's, it has to do with sin, right? As a shepherd, you have to be able to see that extra baggage in those who are leading and be able to address that so that they may be free from that, right? You look at heaviness, the heaviness of wool. A part of uh, being a shepherd is going to them saying, hey, I think you got some extra baggage that we need to deal with. And you taking the clippers and you helping them take that wool off so that they may feel lighter so that they may be free from that, and so they aren't stained. Something about sheep is that if they are not cared about, that they that their their wool itself is really dirty. It gets in knots, and it's, it can be really detrimental for disease and different stuff, right? And so as us as shepherds, as Christians, even specifically, we have to be willing to take that step. Amen? Amen.